this is an introductory talk about ERCP for endoscopists who wish to learn this procedure. So I have decided to share some insights and tips to enable you to do a safe ERCP. I am going to speak about 1A, 2Bs, 3Cs and 4Ds and thus give you 10 tips for safe ERCP. Now since its introduction in 1968, ERCP has become the most important technique for the diagnosis and treatment of biliopancreatic diseases. However, please remember that ERCP and its related procedures are among the most complicated endoscopic procedures and carry a significant risk for patients. So the first priority of every endoscopist should, should be to learn how to do a safe ERCP. So here are the 10 tips for doing a safe ERCP starting with A. A here stands for the anatomy of the ampulla. Let's get the nomenclature right first. So when we say ampulla of Witter, we are referring to the dilatation formed at the junction of CBD and MPD. This is also known as the hepatopancreatic or a biliopancreatic ampulla. Besides that, we have a major or a, a greater duodenal papilla, which refers to the elevation which we see on the medial wall of the second part of duodenum during ERCP. This is the site where the ampulla of waiter opens into the duodenum. Incidentally, this major duodenal papilla also marks the transition point from foregut to midgut. We also have a minor duodenal papilla, which is the opening of the accessory pancreatic duct of Santorini. And this is usually located 2.5 cm proximal to the major papilla. Three types of ampullas have been defined. The first being what we refer to as the Y-shaped or a common channel ampulla, which is the most common type seen in almost 60% of the cases and is the true ampulla. So it has a common channel which can be variable in length ranging from 1 to 8 millimeters and then a septum bifurcates this common channel into two ducts. So remember during ERCP the principle of selective cannulation, particularly CBD cannulation is to get above this septum that divides the common channel and thus avoid entering into the pancreatic duct. The second type of ampulla is the V-shaped or a double barreled ampulla. Now it has no common channel but the two ducts have a common opening in the papilla and this is seen in approximately 38% of your cases. The third type of ampulla is the one in which there is no junction of CBD and MPD. In fact, there is no ampulla at all. The two ducts have separate openings at the papilla and this is the rarest variant and is seen in just 2% of the cases. The ampulla is surrounded by a sphincter complex which consists of three distinct sphincters. So we have a sphincter of odi around the ampulla, a colidocal sphincter around the CBD and a pancreatic sphincter around the MPD. Again, remember during ERCP, the sphincter of odi should be the only sphincter which is divided during sphincterotomy. Coming on to the Bs, the first B stands for biliary anatomy. Now, endoscopist must understand the biliopancreatic anatomy of every case before starting ERCP. And the best modality to understand this anatomy is a MRCP. Besides helping in diagnosis, MRCP gives you an anatomical roadmap for doing ERCPs. It will inform you about the length, diameter and the dilatation of the CBD, CHT, main pancreatic duct and its branches and the IHPRs. It informs you about the size and the site of insertion of the cystic duct. It gives you information about the primary and the secondary biliary confluences and about the site of stricture, blockage or a very rare scenario of a complete cutoff of a duct. So in today's era, there is no role of diagnostic ERCP. The practice of routinely injecting contrast to look at the ductal anatomy should be avoided. The second B stands for bile duct axis. So during ERCP, when you are in the second part of the duodenum and you are in front of the papilla, spend some time there, maintaining a respectful distance. Do not rush to cannulate. So before you attempt to cannulate, try to mentally visualize the axis of the ducts in three dimensions. 
So this helps you decide the direction in which you are going to advance the catheter or the sphincterotome for cannulation. So please remember to take a good aim before you take a shot. If the target is the CBD, then remember that the intraduodenal part of CBD is aligned at 11 o'clock position and you must orient the catheter tip towards the 11 o'clock position to cannulate the CBD and to do a subsequent sphincterotomy. If the target is the pancreatic duct, then remember that the pancreatic duct is aligned along 1 o'clock position and hence you must orient the catheter between 1 and 3 o'clock position to cannulate the MPD. Coming on to the three C's. The first C stands for cannulation. Now cannulation is the most important step of ERCP. Without cannulation, you cannot do ERCP. So when you are in the second part of the duodenum, the first thing you must do is to identify and locate the papilla, which is usually seen on the posterior medial wall of the duodenum. However, the papilla very often is hidden behind a transverse mucosal fold and hence you have to lift that mucosal fold using either the tome or the catheter before you can actually visualize the papilla. So once located, now you must bring the papilla to its correct position. It should be visible in the upper part of your screen around 12 o'clock position. Again, do not rush to cannulate. And when you take your attempt at cannulation, remember to be gentle. You cannot force your way into the papilla. In fact, the risk of post ERCP pancreatitis is directly proportional to the number of attempts of cannulation. So you must treat the papilla like you treat your partner with respect, dignity, gently and with patience. Study the papilla. Remember that the key to a successful selective cannulation is to understand the morphology of this papilla. So a major duodenal papilla is basically a conical prominence approximately 5 to 10 millimeters long and 5 to 6 millimeters in width and is located in the posterior medial wall of the second part of the duodenum approximately 8 centimeters from the pylorus. However, this position is variable and it may be present either proximally or more distally. This papilla has transverse circular duodenal folds running over it. And the first transverse mucosal fold above the papilla is referred to as the hood of the papilla. This papilla joins the duodenal wall by a vertical fold inferiorly, which we refer to as the frenulum. Four anatomical variations of papilla have been defined. Type 1 being a small or a retracted papilla with absent infundibulum. Type 2 being a papilla with a very small infundibulum and poorly defined orifices. Type 3 being the papilla with large protruding or pendulous infundibulum and visible orifices. And the type 4 papilla is the large one with multiple overlying folds of mucosa over the orifices, what we sometimes refer to as the sharp eye dog papilla. So before cannulation, look at the papilla carefully. Try to identify the orifices within the papilla. If you see a single ampullary orifice, this means there is a common channel that further bifurcates via a septum into the CBD and the MPD. If you see two separate orifices, this means that one is for the biliary duct and the other is for the pancreatic duct. So you must remember that the biliary orifice is almost always located in the left upper quadrant between 10 and 12 o'clock position. And the pancreatic orifice is usually located between 1 and 3 o'clock position. So besides identifying the orifices, evaluate the length of the intraduodenal part of the papilla which can predict the difficulty due to a long siphon. So basically there are two methods of cannulation. The first being the contrast guiding cannulation in which you inject contrast to identify the ducts and the anatomy. This should be avoided because it is associated with a relatively higher rate of post ERCP pancreatitis. But if at all required, inject as little contrast as possible. The other method of the cannulation is contrast-free wire-guided cannulation and this is, should be your preferred method of cannulation since it is associated with a lower incidence of PEP and has a selective biliary cannulation rate of above 90%.
cannulation may be difficult for various reasons such as the presence of a periampillary diverticula tight distal cvd structures stone impacted at the distal end of the cvd presence of ampullary lesions and so on and so forth so a difficult cvd cannulation is defined as the cannulation of a native papilla if we cannot cannulate after 5 minutes or 5 attempts of cannulation or there has been more than one unintended pancreatic cannulation now this scenario tells you that it is time to change your approach and ad adopt advanced techniques of cannulation such as the pre cut which are beyond the scope of my talk today the second c stands for cholangiogram every endoscopist must know how to do a complete cholangiogram and how to read it so once deep selective cannulation is achieved contrast is injected under fluoroscopy so half strength contrast media in the concentration of 25 to 30% is usually good for visualization of the small ducts and to for the visualization of the filling defects within the dilated ducts however for the visualization of biliary strictures peripheral intrahepatic ducts and the pancreatic ducts you must prefer the full strength contrast media in a concentration of 50 to 60% so with the patient in prone position as would be the case in almost all your ercps remember that it is the left lobe or the left ductal system which fills first of all simply because the contrast media is heavier than the bile and flows down into the dependent left lobe this is followed by the outlining of the right lobe anterior segment and it's lastly the right lobe posterior segment which fills at the end and in fact this right posterior segment may remain unfilled unless more volume and injection force are applied so if you look at this slide the picture on the left side appears to be a complete cholangiogram with both the left and the right duct systems outlined however only when the patient is tilted another 20 degrees head down and more volume of contrast was injected the actual the real right ductal system became obvious and was outlined by the contrast so the correct interpretation of the cholangiogram is very important when you are looking at a cholangiogram you must look for the complete outlining of the biliary tree including the bilateral ihbrs look for any filling defects within the ducts which indicate either a stone or a stricture disease look for any spill of the contrast which would indicate a leak and lastly look for the free spill into the duodenum and the outlining of the second part of the duodenum a few tips regarding cholangiogram the diameter of the cht and the cbd on ercp commonly appears to be 2 to 3 mm greater than that seen on a ct scan or a ultrasound but this is simply because of the ductal system being filled with the contrast and the pressure remember to place the duodenoscope in a long position for inspecting the middle portion of the bile duct since this is often obscured obscured by the superimposed instrument shaft and lastly balloon occlusion cholangiograms they allow for a greater precision and control of contrast introduction now coming on to the third c which stands for the cut or sphincterotomy so once you have cannulated once you have done your cholangiogram now it is time to do the sphincterotomy so before you start doing the sphincterotomy decide the direction and the depth of the cut use monopolar pure cut current mode and go for the endo cut mode of your electrosurgical unit this gives you a pulsed and a controlled cutting and can avoid the risk of a zipper cut which can be associated with high incidence of perforation remember to cut in the safe zone which is the area of least vascular density around the papilla and is usually located between 10 and 12 o'clock position once in a while you may require to do a pre cut or a needle nice sphincterotomy this techniques needs a little bit of learning so learn how to do a safe pre cut coming on to the four d's the first d stands for the direction of the sphincterotome during cannulation So for CBD cannulation the sphincterotome should be directed from below upwards and again directed to 11 o'clock position 
for pancreatic duct cannulation you must direct the sphincterotome straight forwards from the left to the right side and it should be directed to one o'clock position the second d stands for diverticular duodenum is the second most common site of gi diverticula after the colon and the most common location of duodenal diverticula is the periampillary region now they are called periampillary when they are located within 2 to 3 cm of the ampulla now they are seen in 10 to 15% of the cases who undergo ERCP however this incidence increases with age but in most cases they are asymptomatic and are incidentally diagnosed on ERCP based on the location of the papilla in relation to the diverticula three types of papilla have been identified type 1 being where the location of the papilla is within the diverticula and the papilla may be located anywhere within the diverticula now it, it could be relate uh, it could be on the left side right side the upper or the lower part of the diverticula type 2 periampillary diverticula are those in which the location of papilla is on the edge of a diverticula and then we have a type 3 where the diverticula itself is located 2 to 3 centimeters away from the papilla type 3 being the most common and type 1 being the rarest the third d stands for devices the endoscopist must know your scope and the accessories which you are going to use so a duodenal scope has some additional features such as an elevator and it is a side viewing scope so you must be familiar with the working of your side viewing scope when you are doing an ERCP. You must have this entire list of accessories available in your inventory. You must have all the different kinds of guide wires, sphincterotomes, different sizes of biliary balloons, different sizes of CRE balloons, dormias and the occasional lithotriptor when you are going to need, when you are going to tackle a large stone. The fourth D stands for deferring the procedure. Please remember that selective CVD cannulation has a failure rate of 5 to 15 percent in the best of hands. So sometimes, despite all efforts, you may fail to cannulate the biliary tree. Accept this, this may not be your day. So the best approach is to defer the procedure and try to repeat the ERCP in 24 to 48 hours if the patient can wait. However, if the patient cannot wait, it is better to refer the patient to a colleague or a center with more experience in ERCP or you may consider an alternative approach of percutaneous or EUS guided approach for biliary access. So I would like to end my talk with these messages. ERCP is an advanced endoscopic procedure. It has a learning curve. So you must dedicate yourself to learning and doing a safe ERCP. And it is a very rewarding procedure both for the patient and endoscopist if done properly. And as I tell everyone, the future is hybrid. So all surgeons must strive to be a surgeon and an endoscopist. Thank you for your patient hearing.